blood pressure can vary physiologically also and pathologically also. Pathologically, it's very clear. Either that could be hypertension or hypotension. The blood pressure either increase or decreases. So these are the only two variations of blood pressure will exist. But when we say pathological variations, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things which will be doing the variations in the blood pressure. What are those? First is the age. Second is the sex. Third is the body build. Uh, fourth is the diurnal variations. Fifth is during sleep. Sixth is emotional conditions. And seventh is after exercise. Let me explain this one by one. First is the age. We must know that over the age, the blood pressure starts to increase little by little. What I mean by this? See, so the, uh, the first here is the age. This is systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure. So newborn will be having the blood pressure of 70 by 40 mm of HG. Means 70 will be the systolic, 40 will be the diastolic. When the baby becomes one month, the pressure will be 85 to 45 mm of 85 by 45 mm of HG. Six months, 90 to 50. After one year, it will be 95 to 55. At puberty, 120 uh, by 8 mm of HG. And at the age of 50 and more above, the BP will be 140 mm of HG systolic and 85 mm of HG diastolic. What I mean by this? In any case of uh, 50 years of patient comes to you, 140 by 85 mm of HG blood pressure is the normal. It is a physiological variation in the blood pressure. Okay. At 70 years, the BP will be 160 to 90 and 80 years, 180 by 95 mm of HGBP will be considered as normal. But this is not the only thing which will be doing the BP variation. There are certain other things also. What you need to remember, the average will be 120 mm of HG and there are certain age groups where the BP can vary. Okay. So next is the sex. See, before menopause, the arterial pressure is 5 mm of HG less than in the males of same age. Means, Suppose the patient is of 35 years, that is before menopause. This is male patient and this is female patient. In females, the BP will be 5 mm of Hg less than the male patients of the same age. Means female at 35 years of age have 5 mm of, B, mm of Hg less BP than the male of 35 years. Okay. This is not the rule. This is may or may not be, but this variation can exist. But after menopause, it will be equal to that of male of the same age. Means at the age of suppose 50 years, male and females have the equal BP. So there will be no variation. Next third is the body built. Pressure is more in the obese person than in the lean patient. Obviously, if the patient is obese, there will be a lot of metabolic activities will be going on and the patient will need a lot of energy. Need a lot of energy means need a lot of oxygen. Needs a lot of oxygen means the cardiac output should be more. The cardiac output more means there will be more BP. Okay, and in the lean patient, there will be less demand of oxygen. There will be less demand, less cardiac output is enough. So when the cardiac output is less, obviously the blood pressure will be less. So this is how the body built will be uh, important in the physiological variations of the blood pressure. So, uh, so that's why in case of uh, borderline hypertension, we advise the patient to reduce the weight because this is directly proportional with the weight gain. Okay. Next is the diurnal variations means early morning, the BP will be slightly low. And generally, it will be reaching maximum at the noon and it will be low in the evening. After meal, it increases for a few hours due to increase in the cardiac output. So after meal, what happens? There will be increased demand and the absorption will be going on into the body for that. Absorption, storage, all the things are going on. For all the intracellular processes, we will be needing more energy. So, a lot of oxygen is demanded during the digestion of food. So, that's why after meal, the BP starts to increase. But once the food gets digested, all the system starts to settle down. So, that's why early in the morning and in the evening, the BP will be slightly low than after food. Then during sleep, it reduces up to 15 to 20 mm of HG during the sleep. and But increases slightly during the sleep associated with dreams okay so when the patient sleeps the bp may reduce 15 to 20 mm of hg is fine to do that because during the deep sleep 
all the again all the systems including cns are settling down the cardiac output will be required very less amount because <coughs> no major metabolic processes are going on so as a result of which the bp may settle down but during sleep with the dreams the bp can slightly increase because so dreams what happens in during dreams there will be stimulation of hypothalamus emotional center so this can cause uh, the increase in the heart rate and increase in the cardiac output this is the, because of which in dreams the bp will be slightly more than the normal sleep in emotional condition during excitement or anxiety the bp increases due to release of adrenaline see we we all know that in adrenal system also we have seen during the excitement or uh, anxiety that is during the stress adrenaline will be released and this adrenaline can cause the vasoconstriction hence there will be a raised in the bp you might have commonly observed when the patient is in during excitement uh, during anxiety the patient bp starts to raise okay and during excitement uh, if we get more happy and all these things because of this excitability there will be increase in the heart rate increase in the heart rate means more cardiac output more cardiac output means more bp but this is for short term okay as the condition excitement settles down as the anxiety settles down bp starts to come to the normal condition seventh is after exercise after moderate exercises systolic blood pressure increases by 20 to 30 mm of hg and how why it is increasing because of increase in the rate and force of contraction stroke volume okay so when the patient is doing moderate exercises obviously he will be needing more oxygen so there will be increased heart rate increased force of contraction so stroke volume increases means cardiac output eventually increases so because of which there will be raised systolic blood pressure 20 to 30 mm of hg but there will be no change in the diastolic blood pressure because there will be no change in the peripheral uh, resistance means there will be no change in the arterial and capillary arterioles and capillary level so the total peripheral resistance will not be changed. Hence, diastolic pressure won't change. But what happens in the severe muscular exercises? If we do exercises, the systolic blood pressure obviously raised very high. There will be 40 to 50 mm of Hg raised. But diastolic pressure reduces because the peripheral resistance decreases in severe muscular exercises. What I mean by this? When the patient do vigorous exercises, there will be vasodilatation in the uh, later stage okay because of because of vasodilatation there will be reduced peripheral resistance peripheral resistance is less means a lot of blood starts to come into uh, the venous side and the diastolic blood pressure starts to fall down okay so this is in severe exercises so what we have discussed is the physiological and pathological variations of blood pressure.